Okay, welcome everyone to this uh, interview with um, our one and only, the amazing Bishop of Australia and New Zealand, um, Mar Amel Luna. Thank you, Sayyidina, for coming along and allowing to have us this interview. Beautiful with me and Zahi, um, founder of Christian Modern Christian Collection, um, doing amazing work, uh, interviewing all these um, prominent figures to bring us closer to the faith and to help us in, in everything that we do. Zahi Gurgis, welcome to our, to our show and hoping that me and Zahi can um, form a good interview with Sayyidina and kind of ask the tough questions um, to the Bishop that are arising in our community, in our world, and um, how can we be enlightened and bring the faithful closer to the church in everything that we do. Zahi, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure having you um, share this platform with you also, together with our, with our Bishop. It's a pleasure, it's an honour. So Zahid, now we'll start with some easy questions and then we'll go on, we'll move on to more harder ones. <laughs> so Zahid, now for the Latin right, Lent has started, so the fasting has started. But you know, everyone wants to know, well, how does a bishop fast and what does he fast from? So Zahid, now we're curious to know, what are you fasting from? Uh, I am like uh, other people. I do my uh, Lent or fasting like other people. Uh, what the church say, uh, and uh, sometimes more uh, also. Um, but let me uh, talk a, a bit about the Lent itself, because uh, many people, they don't understand what is the Lent and for what uh, we do the Lent, uh, especially in current uh, uh, life. Uh, the Lent is a very special time in our life, uh, in our faith also. And uh, to make it very easy, uh, there's an example about Lent from the Bible. In the Genesis, in the beginning of the Bible, uh, the, the said the Bible that uh, Adam and Eve, they were uh, both naked and they were not shamed. What does it mean that this, this uh, uh, Paragraph from, from, from the Bible is very important for us uh, to understand what is the Lent. Because uh, Adam and Eve uh, were uh, front of God uh, without anything else, without any uh, obstruction, any fence. Uh, they were, the truth of Adam and Eve uh, was a front of God. So the Lent is exactly this, this meaning. That means in the Lent, uh, we try to uh, stay, stay uh, front of God uh, without anything else. We try to say to God that uh, this is our truth. So for doing this, uh, we have to uh, do many things. Uh, we have to fasting, to not eat, uh, or to not drink like uh, other times. We have also to not dress like other times. We have uh, also uh, do other things uh, like uh, if we, uh, if I attack uh, uh, my phone or my laptop uh, five, six hours a day in the Lent, I have to do it two or one. So the Lent is about everything. It's not just about fasting. It's not about not uh, eat the meat or other things, uh, about everything. We have to change our life in this, uh, uh, in this time, uh, also, as I said, there's another thing very important. We have uh, to think about our dark side of our life. Uh, uh, we have all of us uh, dark side of our life. Uh, in the time of Lent, uh, we think about it uh, and we try to understand why there is this dark side of our life. Uh, and uh, we also, we have to go to the confession uh, to understand more our life uh, uh, and uh, uh, this, this uh, aspect of our life, uh, the dark side of our life. So uh, the Lent is not just uh, uh, some regulation from the church. Uh, we have to do it and that's it. The Lent is uh, a very good uh, uh, time in our life. Uh, we try to, uh, to stay in front of God without any uh, uh, obstruction, any fence, 
and to show him our truth. In this uh, uh, way, we try also, or we do also, uh, or we go also deep in our life to understand also our life. For that, the Lent in our world now, uh, in our life today, it's very, very important. Thank you, Sayyidna. Well, I think I think you answered my question. I was going to ask you how Lent was created and the purpose of it. So you already answered that. It's one step ahead of us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but um, I'm curious to also know what's your thoughts on Pope Francis uh, visiting Iraq. Uh, it's a very different question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, it's very important to visit to Iraq for Christians of Iraq. It's essential that uh, Holy Father visit them. Very, very important. Mm. But in the same time, the situation of Iraq is not uh, stable. Uh, there is a lot of difficulties, uh, and I am a bit uh, afraid about that, really. Personally, I am a bit afraid about that. Uh, mm. And I hope everything will go uh, good with this, uh, uh, with this visit. Uh, Mm. They, are, they are preparing very well uh, in Iraq, the church, uh, our patriarch, our bishops, uh, other people, they are preparing very well. But as you know, the situation in Iraq is, is not stable. Mm. We can't understand what, uh, what's happening there now. So we have to be a bit afraid about it. But the visit itself is very, very important. Say now, to follow up a question with that, now I hear a lot of people saying, well, what's the point the Pope going to Iraq? Like he's not gonna do any change anyway. Iraq isn't going to change since there's so much problem, so much violence, so much division. How is the Pope gonna make a difference by him just going to visit Iraq? The visit, the, the main purpose for the visit is the, to support Christians, the minority uh, Christians in Iraq. That's the, the main uh, purpose of, of this visit. But uh, also there is uh, other things, uh, uh, support the minority, uh, Christian minority in Iraq, uh, mean that uh, the Pope has uh, the head of Catholic Church. Uh, he is also an international uh, figure. Mm. So uh, he, he could talk with the uh, authorities in Iraq about, uh, about Christians, about their right, about their life. So, of course, there is a lot of things to, uh, to do uh, in this visit. Let's hope, Said. Let's hope everything goes well for the Christian um, brothers and sisters in Iraq. Yeah. So, on a different, on a different topic, um, we're starting to hear this, this trend of um, Catholics that you don't have to attend Mass to be a Catholic. You can just go to your room, you can pray in your room, you can help the poor, you don't have, like, you don't need the church. The question is, Said, now, can a Catholic be actually Catholic without attending Mass? Can he go being a Catholic without being part of the Mass, part of the Church? First of all, of course, no. Without Mass and receiving the body of Christ, there is no faith. There is no Church. There is nothing. Uh, uh, and this, it's, this uh, uh, it's not the teaching of the Church. It is the uh, uh, the, uh, the Lord itself, Jesus Christ, said that in the Last Supper. Oh. So without uh, receiving body and blood of our Lord, there is no faith. Mm -hmm. That's very easy to say. Not just there is no church, there is no faith. Why? Because our faith is not uh, some ideas uh, or some regulations. We have to put them in the practice. It's not, not also a personal relationship between me and God. Our faith uh, is a reality that takes uh, all the dimensions of the man, all his life, his body, his soul, his spirit, and also his collective aspect. So in, in this relationship, uh, there's not just me and God. If, if it is just me and, and God, there's no need for, for uh, Christian faith. There's no need for other religions. Everyone can do it. No? We, in our faith uh, as Catholic, uh, 
we believe that uh, this relationship with Jesus Christ is not based uh, on uh, uh, what I want from him or what is my idea about him. It is based uh, on uh, uh, what he wants to me, mm. what he wants for me, uh, which image uh, I have in his, uh, uh, in his uh, mind, in his life. So Jesus Christ came here to, uh, to show me who, uh, who I am mm. and what I have to do to be like uh, that image, that perfect image uh, uh, that God, when created us, uh, he was in his mind. Mm. So uh, for doing this, uh, it's not uh, just uh, I have to uh, relay on my uh, thoughts, uh, on my uh, feelings uh, and, and other things. I have also uh, to listen to him and to receive him. When I receive him, it's not uh, just uh, I think like him, but I be like him. He, yeah. he transformed from, uh, in my life uh, to my body, to my blood, uh, to my everything in my life. So I became like him. So it's not just about ideas about Jesus. If, if, if the faith is about ideas about Jesus, okay, that's good. Everyone can know Jesus Christ, even not Catholic, mm. even not a religion. Mm. You, can, you can study Jesus Christ and say, uh, yes, there is a good ideas in his teaching. Mm. And then we are not uh, disciples of Jesus Christ because we know him. We are disciples of Jesus Christ because in the Eucharist, we received him to mm. become like him in our world. So without mass, uh, there is no faith. There is no church. There is nothing. Mm. And this idea is not uh, just uh, 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 current idea. It's always like, it was like that. There was always some people thinking like that. Thank you very much, Aiza. So just to follow up on that, I know I think you've probably answered what I'm about to ask you again. <laughs> but uh, so ideally, so for people who haven't gone to church or don't go to church regularly, or even people that go regularly but aren't really, they're just going there, they're not really receiving much out of it what should a person's mindset be like or approach when they attend mass if you know what i mean like if you are attending mass at someone else's church what are you looking to experience at the church uh, there's many things first of all to enjoy that yeah. time in the mass with god yeah uh, second uh, um, to to listen to god in that time Third, to be one body with other people. When, when I received Jesus Christ in the Mass, and you and Mahal and other people receive the same body, we become one body, as St. Paul said. So that's like communion, like communion. Like community and like body, exactly like body. Yeah. So uh, when I go to the Mass, I don't uh, expect to feel good or bad. Uh, I expect it to spend a good time with my God, mm. with someone who I love. Mm. Sometimes it's someone who I love. I don't spend a good time always with him. No? Okay. Uh, but I, I be with him and he be with me. That, and that's the love. So in the Mass also, we spend, maybe we are feeling very bad in that time because a lot of uh, things in our life. Yeah. But we stay there with God because we love him and we know for sure that he loves us. Yeah. So we stay there. So in a couple of years ago, there was a, uh, a census that happened in Australia, like uh, regarding how many percentage are Catholics, how many Protestants, how many atheists and stuff like that. And it was the first time in history that um, the atheism was higher than the Catholic uh, population in Australia. It was the first, the Catholicism was always the highest percentage in Australia. And the first time atheism beat Catholicism in, um, in the numbers. So why do you think, Sayyidina, or is there a reason why Catholics are falling away from the Catholic faith? Are they or is there? 
that uh, just uh, repeat it, please. So do you believe, Sayyidina, that the Catholics um, are falling away from the church, like they leave in the church in Australia? Is there a reason why Catholics are leaving the church? Oh, yes. Uh, of course, there's a lot of people that are leaving the church everywhere in the world. Mm. Uh, there is a lot of reasons. There's not just one reason. I can just uh, uh, mention some of them. Uh, because today the faith is not attractive. Mm. And then there is the power of, uh, if I can say, anti-faith in the world. Yeah. Another reason we have to admit that church failing sometimes and in some places to present the faith in a very simple way, not complicated way. Mm. Agreed. That's, uh, we have to admit it. Mm. Uh, and also the church failing to present our, our principles in a very simple way, not complicated uh, uh, because today everyone wants everything to be simple in his life. Mm. And our faith is very simple, but uh, sometimes we fail to present it to other people in this, uh, in this way. Mm. There is also uh, attacking sometimes uh, um, to the magisterium, uh, uh, church teaching. Uh, a lot of, uh, if I can say, uh, people, uh, they attack uh, the church teaching about every, uh, a lot of things, especially about moral things mm -hmm. or ethics. Uh, another reason, uh, because the church or uh, uh, Christians, especially Catholics, uh, they lived, uh, if I can say, the machinery of the church of the faith, we say that uh, in, in, in one point we say, especially in the Western world, that we have everything. We have the churches uh, as buildings, we have uh, the freedom to, uh, to practice our faith. Uh, we, have, we have everything. We have a lot of people, the church is full of people. We have uh, uh, very big organizations uh, like uh, schools or hospitals, uh, other things, other things. Uh, so we have everything now. Mm. So they stopped be machina missionaries in the in the in the world, and that was uh, a very very bad thing, because uh, uh, in the heart of our faith uh, there is the missionary. We have to be missionary for other people. Mm -hmm. to bring them the image of Jesus Christ. If we say that we have everything in our church yeah, and we need nothing from uh, other people, we start dying. Uh, also, there is another reason, many mistakes in the, the church and between people of faith. We have also to admit that. Uh, and also a lot of attacks uh, on the church and the Christian faith in the media, especially yeah. in the media and uh, uh, in general in the world. Mm. Uh, last thing I can say is uh, we try to be like the world yeah. instead of uh, change the world. Mm. And that's the big mistake that we do. Agree. Uh, we try to be like the world. The church, uh, in the organizations, uh, in the mm. communities, uh, faith communities, uh, also the churches, we try to be like the world, to say to the world that we are like you. Mm. We have we we uh, we have nothing, just like you. Mm. This kind of uh, uh, action is very bad, because our mission is to change the world, not to change it to the world. Yeah what the world wants. Because as you, as we know all that uh, not everything the world wants uh, is good and uh, it's uh, uh, like our faith. Mm. So we have to try to change the world, not to be like the world. I and some that. reasons from what or why are a lot of people are leaving the church. Yeah. I do always say now, you said it, you said it so perfectly.
Thank yeah. you so much for that uh, for that answer. That's perfect. Um, well, we've talked about church and what, what what people can get out of church, and you know why people should go to church. But what about um, day to day lives? Like, how should people approach their day to day life to get closer to God? Right? What What would you suggest? It's very simple to hmm. live uh, his faith, uh, to be happy in his life, and to be proud of his faith, uh, okay. and not to be double personality. That's a very bad thing. What do you mean? In, in, I mean uh, to show something and to feel and live something else. Mm. To show that I am a good uh, Christian, a good Catholic, uh, I go to the church, I practice my faith, uh, or I uh, pray in my uh, uh, house. Uh, my house is full of image of Christ, uh, and uh, my car is uh, a cross. Uh, and uh, in my life, there is another Another things, another reality. Mm. That's very bad. I think the counsel uh, of faith is this: to be double personality. Yeah. If she said in the, in the Bible, Jesus always mentions that hypocrites. Uh, he always talks about. I think it's one thing that he realizes, and I think you said it nice, Saidna. It's like cancer because it eats a person. It eats him inside. In yeah. Chaldean, we said, "Mahzay uh, atpe." Uh, in face, Mahzaya, a show, uh, who show different faces. Ah, nice. Beautiful. That's one, probably one word we learned uh, new today. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Aidna. Um, so I have a complicated scenario. Um, the reason why I want to ask this question, because I remember a priest spoke about this, and I wanted your opinion. Um, the scenario is this. So a man cheats on his wife, but he regrets it and he confesses his sin to a priest. Then his sin gets absolved. Now, say that does that person have to tell his wife or can he keep it away from her? So that's he cheated his, his, his wife and he went to the confession. Yes. First of all, uh, in the confession, we don't give the absolution just because other people or other people asked about uh, absolution. We have uh, uh, to make sure that he regrets what he did a uh, sin and uh, will not come back to the sin again and uh, must do the right things after the confession regarding that sin. So if he cheat his wife uh, and get the absolution, uh, he have, I think, uh, to tell, tell his, his wife about that. Why? Because uh, uh, marriage is about sharing everything, not just good things, but also uh, our weakness, yeah. uh, our sins also. Yes. So if, the, if he uh, gets uh, an absolution from the confession, that means he has to go to his wife and talk about that. Mm. That's so that, what I say. No, I agree with you 100. percent That's why when I when I heard something different, it didn't it didn't sound right that mm. you can um, you don't have to tell your wife. I mean, it didn't didn't make sense to me. Say now. In the confession, we have the, uh, the priest uh, should tell him that you have to tell your wife because if he don't tell his wife, that means he he lied and he do another <laughs> another thing. Yeah. Well, it's I, part, I it's agree. Part of the... It's part of the repentance, isn't it, to tell the wife? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So to follow up about uh, marriage, um, Sena, so you're, you're aware in our community, a lot of marriages. Sena, so one of the ladies wanted to ask a question, and she said, if, then, if, then, if there's an abuse in marriage, for example, if the husband is abusive to the wife or the wife is abusive to the husband, how long can that abuse, abuse be taken for, for the marriage to be split and say, you know what, this is too much. And well, you know, would, you, would you recommend a separation, a divorce, where if it's an abusive relationship in a marriage? I can't say I recommend the separation. Uh, I can say a few words about that. First of all, marriage is, uh, uh, is about love between two, two, two persons. And uh, in this, uh, this uh, marriage, they have uh, to respect the dignity of each other. 
in our faith, in our uh, uh, concept of marriage, in our faith, the dignity of two people is essential. They can, we can't say that uh, the marriage is about the right of man, or not woman, or uh, vice versa. The dignity of two of them. If uh, one of them uh, uh, one day feel that, uh, not just feel, but uh, he live without dignity, mm. he have to do something. He have to do something. Not first of all to uh, ask the separation. Because love in marriage, in our uh, concept of marriage, is uh, forever. If I love someone, I have to be with him, not in good time, but also in bad time. So uh, if my partner don't respect me and uh, give me this feeling about I am, I have not dignity, uh, she or he have to do something. He can go to the priest or he can go to other people who they can help them, or if first of all to speak with him or with her. Uh, uh, as I said, he can go to the church, uh, to other people, to other organizations. He can ask help from other uh, people, also from uh, official people. Like uh, there is a lot of uh, organization and God uh, in our society, uh, they can help uh, people like them. Yeah. So separation is not the first thing to do uh, or to ask. It's maybe a last last. Uh, but uh, we have to uh, say that the dignity of each of them is essential. And it's very bad, very bad uh, when someone uh, uh, not respect his partner in a very bad way. Mm. I, I can't support that. It's very bad thing, really. I agree with you, Saidna. Would you say, Saidna, let's just say this, Let's just say the woman was you know, being abused by the husband and she tried, he, she tried everything to make it work. Would you then put the cards of separation divorce on a table and say, maybe this is the best option then, if they've tried everything? Maybe there is a lot of people that are doing now. Uh, yes, why not? If, uh, uh, if they do anything, everything, and there's no solution for that, yes, they can. Uh, apply for uh, not divorce uh, for annulment of because we don't have annulment. divorce no. yeah. annulment. I agree with you, and I agree with you hundred percent. But I think um, a lot of people in our community they think that um, oh, we don't want to go to church because they will never let us separate. They have that they have that idea that if we go to church, no, they want us to stay stick together and they don't want us to separate in, in whatever happens and we can just be abused in our marriage. That's uh, right and not right. That's right because the church uh, try to keep the marriage uh, between man and woman uh, because the marriage is forever. And we can do nothing in, that, uh, in the case uh, that the marriage is... Uh, 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 there is nothing in the marriage against or against the marriage. We can do nothing. And our mission in life is to, to keep the sacrament of marriage. Mm -hmm. Not to uh, each one who asks us uh, that I have problem with my partner, uh, he uh, don't like me to do that things. Okay, go to uh, separation. We can do that. No, of course. Uh, of, our, we are uh, uh, in our church, uh, we try to keep the sacrament of marriage. And we, do, we will do everything to keep it. Everything. But in the last... Uh, uh, Last thing, if there is nothing to do, not the priest or the bishop will decide that marriage will get a new element or not. There is a tribunal, a church tribunal, not me and priest. Our mission here is to uh, uh, keep the, uh, the sacrament of marriage. But as I said before, with respect to the dignity of each uh, of uh, these two people. Thank you, Sayyid. And I think you've, you've cleared a lot of answers and uh, misconceptions in our community with that answer. Thank you, Sayyidna. So moving on, um, 50, 60 years ago, a lot of Greeks and Italians came to Australia. That's when they come, came, came to settle in Australia. And they were, they were like us, the Chaldeans. You know, they had the youth, the church was alive, the youth were alive. 
-hmm. And we see now that it's not like that anymore. So the youth have kind of gone their way. The church is, the church is barely surviving in this, in this uh, secular world. Because our church Satan, is a bit young in Australia, do you think the Chaldean church is, is heading that way too? Do you think the Maybe. Chaldean church right now would be, would be like the Greek and Italian churches and kind of die out? First of all, I can't know what will happen after 50 or 100 years uh, or in the future. But I can say something about this, uh, this issue. It's really an issue. Mm. Uh, and I believe also in this, uh, uh, what I will say now. The big mistake that other groups, like Italians, like other groups, uh, they have done and still doing, as well as us, uh, we are doing, uh, is relying on the numbers. On numbers. Numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean, relying on quantity, not quality. It's a big mistake. Everything today in our life uh, is about quantity. Mm. How many viewers, for example, you yeah. and Zahi, how many viewers you will have? <laughs> how many attenders in the church? Uh, how many people of faith they came uh, to, the, uh, to the church? Uh, how many baptisms? How many marriages? How many? Always about numbers. Mm. Disciples of Jesus Christ were just 12, and they changed the world. It's a great now point. we are, we say that we have uh, 2 billion of uh, Christians in the world. What we are doing now. So we are talking about just numbers. The big mistake that also the church uh, can do is to look always on the people outside the church, uh, not inside the church. It's good. Uh, in, in, Last decades, uh, and still till now, we try to find people who they are outside the church, uh, and we not, do nothing to, the, uh, uh, to those who are inside. If we want uh, uh, that all the bench of church be full, we have to look uh, about who they are in the church, even mm. if they are very my, uh, little group. If we try to uh, let them enjoy their faith, mm -hmm. and understand their faith in a very simple way, understand why God uh, is in our world, why should I believe in God in my uh, uh, world that I have everything, mm -hmm. why should I believe in God? If, I, if we try to make them understand all these things in a very simple way, I think... Uh, we don't need to uh, think about numbers. And I always believe, believe that uh, minorities uh, is better, quantity, equality minorities uh, is better than a lot of, uh, a huge number of people who they do nothing. Mm. That's, That's very good. brilliant answer, say now. Very, very nicely said. And I think uh, having you as a, as a head of our church in Australia and New Zealand, I think our church is heading the right way. So thank you, Saidna. Awesome. Thank you. So Saidna, your, your approach, I guess, is making sure that we are taking care of the people already at the church. Because if they're, if they're having a fulfilled life, if they are feeling inspired, if they are you know, feeling the presence of God, naturally they'll attract more people into the church, just like the disciples did. Is that is that? Yes. Okay? Yeah. Um, what about our language, uh, Sayyidina? It's, it's, it's powerful not to mention it's the language of the Lord. Um, what do you think the church is doing to preserve the language um, so it doesn't get lost between the generations? Uh, I think we do a lot uh, as Chaldean church, not just in Australia, but everywhere. Yeah. First of all, because all of our, our prayer and masses are in our language. And that's the best way to keep our language is to keep keep uh, doing masses uh, and uh, prayers in our language. Mm. Sometimes people say that we don't understand that. Uh, it's a very easy uh, uh, thing to say because understanding is not just up in our mind. We understand things also in our heart. Yes. When I 
uh, when I be with someone uh, who speak, for example, other language, but I love him, and uh, I feel like he is uh, uh, speaking or doing something good, that's also a, a kind of understand. Yes. So the best way to keep our language is to keep uh, doing uh, uh, our liturgy in our language. Mm. But also there is other things in Melbourne, for example, there is school of language. Uh, every Saturday there is a, a, a school of for catechism and also language. Also here in Sydney. Um, and thank God there's uh, many people uh, from Shamashi deacons or sub-deacons mm. who they want to learn our uh, uh, language and in Melbourne now that we have a, um, a new experience there is uh, uh, young people who they who will be sub-deacons uh, uh, in a few months uh, mm. uh, and that's the good thing because it's the first step and maybe now they uh, serve the mass in English but that will encourage them to to learn more of our language, even not in all uh, uh, what we have in the language, but even some some words, a few words, a few sentences, uh, to understand also that. But uh, let me say that very, very important thing uh, uh, to keep our language is when the families, our families, uh, speak this language uh, between them, between the members of them. Yes. Sometimes parents say, uh, we speak uh, English because our uh, young uh, children, they don't understand uh, uh, Surah or Chaldean. Mm. They, they will understand. If we keep uh, talking that, if we keep talking uh, uh, our language in uh, between us, uh, they will understand. Because mm. English is very easy for them. They're, it's their language, the, right. uh, the main language but they can understand and learn another language very easy. Even just for understand, not talking. Mm -hmm. We don't need people who they talk a lot about uh, in Chaldean. We, we want people who they understand what we say. Yes. So all these things, we, if we uh, keep doing it, uh, they, we will keep our language. Okay. Thank you. I think our language is um, beautiful, Said. It's very powerful. It has always depth meaning to all the words, and not to mention yeah, the language of our Lord Jesus. So we, you know, we, we're blessed to have this language. So now, you as a bishop, you've been bishop for a while. I know you see a lot, you hear a lot, and you're around a lot. What is the funniest thing, Sayyidina, that you have seen, whether in a community or whether you're abroad or somewhere else? Is there something that made you like really, really laugh? <laughs> Uh, there is a lot of things, as you said, <laughs> but uh, maybe I uh, can mention something uh, happened long, long time when I was, uh, I think I was a priest uh, first year or not yet uh, in last uh, last year of seminary. You know, uh, the new priest uh, when he do the, his first mass uh, is always very nervous. Uh, it's not easy. Of no? course. So there was uh, a priest, I know him, he was doing uh, first mass, uh, so he was uh, doing like, uh, his hand is like this, uh, he was chanting, uh, and there was uh, a house of light oh. around him. In one point, that's why he got <laughs> in, his, <laughs> in his mouth. Because he was very nervous, he couldn't do it like this. He, he swallowed he, it. He got uh -oh. swallowed it. <laughs> what a timing. After the mass, he said, there was a fly like this, and I swallowed it. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. He'll never forget that, uh, forget that uh, stage now. Yeah. He'll never forget. That, wasn't, that wasn't during Lent, huh? <laughs> Okay, good. Thank you, Saidna. Oh, that's good. Um, so, what's something that you love about the Chaldean community? What's what's one thing or some of your favorite things about the Chaldean community? Uh, of course, everything because I am Chaldean. <laughs> but uh, the main things that, uh, if I can say, the zeal of faith or this enthusiasm of faith. Oh. 
uh, even people who they don't come to the church, uh, who they are not practice, uh, uh, there's this enthusiasm of faith. When someone talk about faith, about uh, Christianity, they feel bad. Uh, this kind of uh, zeal of uh, enthusiasm, we can't find uh, it in other communities. I'm not, I'm not just uh, saying that because I'm Chaldean, but other bishops I know, when they came here, when they know us, they said that uh, we lost this, uh, uh, that what you have, we lost it. So uh, I hope we keep that, yeah. I hope. Mm, I agree with Sayyidina. I think our Chaldean community is very, very strong, Sayyidina. It, like that, when we do things in Melbourne, in our community, the Archdiocese of Melbourne hear about the things that we do in our church, which is beautiful, always beautiful to see. Exactly. Exactly. Sayyidina, I've got another question I want to ask you. Second last question. Um, what is something that you think the Chaldean community can leave behind or do less? Are we celebrating or over-celebrating things like baptism? Is, is, is it too much? Have we have we gone over that you know that idea where we just we are celebrating everything now? As you know, we live in Australia and also New Zealand. And, uh, we have to uh, uh, to understand uh, how to live in this country. So some uh, some norms of habits of our life, social life, uh, we have to uh, live them. Some of them, not all, mm. because uh, we have to do like balance uh, between uh, uh, our uh, mentality, Eastern mentality, our uh, Eastern culture, Eastern Christian culture, and Chaldean culture, and uh, Australian or New Zealand culture. So we have to do balance. We don't uh, want to be 100% like uh, uh, Eastern people and 100% like uh, Western people, we have to do like balance. So mm -hmm. some, some, uh, uh, um, I can't say traditions, uh, but norms uh, how uh, in social uh, life we have to give them. Like we have exaggeration of celebrating uh, a lot of uh, uh, parties in our life. Uh, a lot uh, for occasion, uh, sometimes we can't understand why like baptism, as you said, uh, First Holy Communion, uh, many other things regarding marriage, uh, there's exaggeration of celebrating. Uh, uh, enjoying our life, our uh, uh, what we have in our life is very good. Mm. And the church uh, is with the joy of life. Uh, we, uh, we encourage people to be always happy. Uh, happy not uh, uh, personally but also together but not uh, exaggeration so I I hope some of them we can leave, leave there mm. yeah. thank you Sayyidina no, I, I agree with you socially I think baptism for example as an example like Maha said baptism itself uh, you know some people even might feel pressured that they have to put on a big celebration and that's, there's no reason to do that if, if all you want to do is just celebrate, you know, the Holy Spirit, which is what, what, what baptism is for. Also, first Holy Communion. Yeah. Holy Communion. Like a wedding. Now it's like marriage. Yeah. Do party like marriage. Yeah. I, I don't want a wedding when I'm 11 years old. I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. Yes. Okay. We're going to wrap it up soon. I want to ask you, talking about uh, our language, just if you can just tell everybody when they can actually tune in to the Facebook uh, St. Thomas page and there's a Chaldean Mass, which which time is that every week? In the, every, every church there is a, a Mass in Chaldean language and also in Arabic and English. Yes, but the Chaldean? In Chaldean in 8.30 in St. Thomas Cathedral. Yeah. And, uh, there's Chaldean Mass uh, online also. Yes. But, uh, Arabic from uh, St. Mary's uh, in, uh, in Fairfield uh, at uh, 11 and English at uh, 6.30, I think. Yes. This is in Sydney. In Melbourne, there's also in Chaldean, Arabic, English. Mm. Yes. Fantastic. And also in New Zealand. Yes. So we've got, we've got all, the, all the crowds to please them all, whichever language they want. <laughs> 
given the future said we can have a kurdish uh, mass <laughs> um, maybe this is what i think our last question but uh it's an interesting one if you had a chance to ask our lord jesus christ one question what would it be very difficult question <laughs> Uh, really, I ask him to give me power or to encourage me always uh, to make other people understand uh, how important is our faith for their life. I enjoy when I make other people understand uh, that the faith is, is essential for their life. Yes. And I ask Jesus uh, always uh, to give me the, the power to continue uh, make other people enjoying uh, or understanding their faith. Beautiful. Then, do you, would you think, Sayyidina, that um, would, there be, would there be a question you'd want to ask uh, our Lord, like why this or maybe why that? Why did he do it in this way or why did he do it in that way? Would there be a question or you've, you've got the better? Of... We can question our Lord everything. Mm. We can uh, also. Uh, in the Bible, there is everything, no? Uh, there is people who they uh, talk with uh, with the Lord in very easy way. There is people they talk with the Lord with angry. Uh, there is people who they cry. Uh, so we can ask our Lord everything mm. because he loves us mm. more than we love ourselves. So we, uh, we can ask him everything. Thank you so much. Sayyidina Melnona, it's always a pleasure having you online. Um, I know for a fact a lot of people love hearing your interviews and your wisdom because you say it in the most powerful yet the simplest way. Um, mm. It's always a pleasure having you say that. And I always thank you for always giving us your time because I know you're a very busy man being the bishop. Um, mm. It's always a pleasure to give us a bit of your time so we can talk to you, discuss issues in our community and how you can help us Come closer to the church and the faith. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Mahar and uh, Zahi. And we have to thank also uh, COVID-19 virus because he gave us uh, a lot of <laughs> time. <laughs> online to, time. Uh, to connect with people uh, through online. <laughs> Say that maybe, maybe, um, maybe they realized that with me, you and Zahi, we're going to do an interview. So they said, let's lock the whole Melbourne so they can listen to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, Sayyidina. And I want to say thank you so much for Zahi um, sharing his platform. The founder and creator of Modern Christian Collection. He's doing amazing things. Um, you can uh, see him on YouTube. He's got his interview, interview the bishop and a lot of prominent figures. Zahi, you're doing amazing things. And um, thank you so much. Anything you want to say, Zahi, before we finish off? No, it's... Yes, oh. Zahi. Yeah, no, just, it's an absolute pleasure, Mahar. You, you, you've done amazing things, and you continue to do that with Jesus Christ daily in the community in Melbourne. So I know a lot of youth look up to you and appreciate it, but uh, it's, it's an honour to share that with you, and um, it's always an absolute pleasure to have, you know, Sayyidna with us. Um, he, he's gracing people every day with what he's doing, and I know for a fact that he is so, so busy, like you said, uh, with doing so much for the communities in Sydney. So I'd love to leave it to you, Sayyidna, for the last one to speak and let us know any, any way we can help or the communities also can, uh, can help the church. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Mahal and Zahi. God bless you for what we are doing. Uh, you are really disciples uh, because uh, uh, all of us, we have to be disciples of uh, our Lord. We have uh, to keep uh, our people always uh, in their faith uh, through uh, what we are doing now. Uh, so thank you very much. God bless you. God bless all of our people. And I hope really that we can uh, keep this, uh, this willing of understand our faith uh, in a very simple way and live our faith and enjoy our faith. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Saidna. God bless Saidna and hopefully see you in Melbourne when the lockdown is finished. Yes, of course. Thank God you. bless. Bye. Bye. Now.